morning. Uh, I wanted to, real quick, uh, I'm not strapping this to me this morning because um, for our last chapter in Proverbs, um, it's, it's, as you're going to hear, is kind of a more well-known chapter of the Bible. Um, and so I'm actually going to turn it over to Anna, uh, who's going to be sharing with you for Proverbs 31. Hello. So like Hunter said, we're going to do Proverbs 31. And um, I've actually was, was telling him that it's, it's a little interesting. I haven't, I haven't had to do a study kind of like this in a while. This is going to possibly, probably be two parts. Um, there's two big parts to Proverbs 31. Um, we have the first part, which are the, the words of King Lemuel. And then the second part, which is the, the woman who fears the Lord. To start out, we're going to, to read the first part of Proverbs 31, which is um, 31, 1 through 9, um, which has to do with the words of King Lemuel. Uh, the words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. What are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women your ways to those who destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember this, their misery no more. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. It's pretty important to, to know that in this time and in, in a lot of times, the mother of a king was really respected. She was held above a certain standard, even more so than the king's own wife because she would have lived longer in having birthed the king people would have seen her as a very highly respected person there's nothing in here that really makes us think that king lemuel is an actual real king or or that his mother is even a real person a lot of this is just a symbolic of, of what an ideal king would be um, what the ideal mother of the king would say to the ideal king of a country. Her starts, you know, with with his mother um, talking to him and saying, you know, what are you doing, son of my womb, son of my vows? Um, and this is kind of kind of like saying, you know, what are you doing, somebody that I've prayed for, somebody that I've hoped for, somebody that I've really I've asked God to bring into to my life and somebody that you're just you're you're earnestly talking to and you want to to really get their attention kind of a moment like like almost like saying hello hello I'm talking to you and she's she's warning her son do not give your strength to women your ways to those who destroy kings and what a great way to start, you know? She's warning about counsel. She's warning about who you seek advice from, who you talk to when trying to discern matters of life, of governing other people. Don't turn to somebody who is a destroyer of kings. Don't turn to somebody who will warp what you want into, into things for themselves. She's saying, always always seek good counsel somebody who who is teaching you and is reassuring you and who is helping you to do the best that you can do for who you are in charge of as we keep reading it kind of changes from that like good counsel to to a lot more warnings you know we get, we get to verse 4 and it says it is not for kings o lemuel it is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink. And 
she's not saying that the kings can't drink. The kings did did drink and have things back then. Um, but what she's warning of is to not overindulge. Don't don't drink yourself into a drunken stupor where you are easily persuaded, where where things of the mind and of the body and of the world take over what is your better judgment, that good counsel that you have been seeking. Don't let the drink and all of those things that go with that affect the good counsel that you have been given. And you cannot go and lose your wits. You need to keep them because you are not just in charge of you. You are not just in charge of your immediate family. A king's job is to take care of the entire kingdom. And how can a king do that if he's one, getting bad counsel from people? Um, or two, if he is spending all of his time drinking. A king's job is to, to speak and to, to be there for the people. Verse 8 and 9 are, are pretty important with, with kind of summing up what the king's mother is telling him. The king is supposed to be the face of your kingdom. He's supposed to show other kingdoms and other things around the world who you are as a kingdom and how he conducts himself and how he maintains his decorum and the things that he has said and how he takes care of his people. That shows those around him what kind of a king he is. This part in Proverbs, Proverbs 31, 1 through 9, it kind of seems to almost be asking you like, do you listen to bad counsel? Do you let the world and the things of the world surround your, your thoughts and the way that you the way that you lead your life and the way that your life reflects God. Are you a good king in showing your kingdom and your walk with God through your everyday life? Are you doing your part that you are making the choices and the decisions that are right in showing the world who he is. Um, verse 8 and 9 says, Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of those who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Thank you for listening to the words of King Lemuel and more specifically from the words of his mother and the advice from a mother. Mm -hmm.